okay, I think you know you are done with the uh, roll call, right? Or your think so. Yep. Okay, good. Um, so it's okay. Thanks everyone for joining this uh, meeting. I know it's a uh, for US um, people. This is uh, the day before the uh, the holiday. It's good. Um, I would like to post the link of this um service on um, this one. No, not this one. The function graph. This work flow language link. Let me post that to there. Okay. Um, so that um, maybe I post it here so that people can take a look at this um, without this. I'm not sure, have, have, has anyone got a chance to look at this document? Anyone? Okay. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've reviewed it. So, so you have read it? Okay. Okay. Yeah, we also read that. Okay, good, good. I think, you know, um, so since this is the first meeting, it's open discussion. Okay. So this is what I put into the agenda. Like, you know, I'm thinking of, you know, we should define some use cases. And then we, I think another very important um, work item is we define the scope of the service workflow. And then we can define the goals of this, uh, also the goals of the subgroup, right? What is output? Mm -hmm. uh, and then we can dive into the detail of the, you know, the how we should, you know, like write the workflow specification, right? And so I gave a, a draft there just to, um, you know, just to help with the discussion. Um, so, um, um, Maybe first, um, I okay. Let's go to this document. Um, I so in this document, I have not um, written down any um, use cases yet. Um, but we, I think we can start putting that down. You know, for the use cases. Um, so what, what's what's the thought of other people? Um, any suggestion? Yeah. Hi. This is Tim Bray from AWS. Um, hi. Uh, some some use cases would be handy, um, I, uh, very 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 useful I think in order you know to, to qualify what what, we're what what the effort is trying to achieve here. Also, um, I noticed that um, out there in the world of workflows, there there are sort of generally speaking two approaches. There's the state machine specific uh, approach, which you know which your which your draft seems to be taking, and there's a dependency graph approach, which is quite a different flavor, which is what for example Apache Airflow uses. Um, uh, which treats a workflow more or less like a make file, right? You say, you know, here's what I need and to do that. I need these dependencies and those have those dependencies and then the workflow system works through them. Um, it's not instantly obvious, which is, sorry, it seems clear to me that neither is universally the best solution, but they are well suited for different kinds of use cases. Um, right at the moment, um, Airflow is getting terrific traction out there in the ML community. Um, who have to do, you know, ML people have to do a tremendous amount of file shuffling and processing and QA raising and so on. So um, I, I would think that, you know, uh, I'll look at that and then, you know, just a survey of the current state of the art along with uh, Airflow, there's Luigi, which is another, you know, popular open source, you know, generously licensed um, workflow system. And then there's a, a, a step functions, which is the one thing I work on at AWS. Um, so, so I, yeah, I would think it might be interesting to, you know, contrast what's out there in the field and use that to to figure out what you know unique purpose this effort is purposes. Obviously, this effort is trying to achieve. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think you know the, I think that though, okay, those comes to the goals of the subgroup, right? What is the purpose? We, I mean, we we work on this, right? Um, so my take is. We would like to define. Um, I wouldn't say it's a standard, but it's a it's a consistent way for the user to specify its um, the workflow, um, the application um, workflow requirement, so that no matter which um, service platform the user is, you know, um, is using, it can be portable across different um, platforms. Uh, I'm not sure whether um, that that's other people's thought on that. 
Yeah, <clears throat> this is Brian from Surplus. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would also say that one potential interesting angle to that might be the ability to be able to break up a workflow uh, mm -hmm. in such a way where parts of it could be spread to different uh, mm -hmm. systems, depending upon you know, if the, the workflow reaches across multiple clouds. Sometimes it can be beneficial to have a portion of the workflow much closer to the pieces that it's using before it goes back to orchestrate with the, the rest of it. Um, yeah, it's just something to kind of consider there. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I think let's also catch the, I think the, what's our goal, right? We, the goal is to have a doc. Uh, let me edit that. Okay, I'm just writing down what's, I think, that, is that right, right, you say? Yeah. Sure, I mean, nothing wrong, but to be, to be perfectly fair, um, you know, uh, Apache Airflow can do that right now today, right, so. Yeah, I think, you know, that's a mechanism, right? So whether it's state machine or whatever mechanism, right? Um, you know, the state machine can also do that. Um, I think dependency graph, so we can discuss that. So I think um, Brian you would like also to uh, specify to add a word, say, you know, the workflows split up across different multiple clouds, how we do that, right? Yes, correct, that's what it said. Okay, not just in, uh, in addition to, okay. Sorry, addition to workflow in a single cloud. Okay, that's good. Um, so um, the okay, I think uh, I think this should be put this into the use cases. I think this is more on the, I would say this is more on the on the go, right? On the go. Maybe I put this under the um, under the go. Okay, with this. Um, so, okay, so I think, you know, um, maybe the first step is, you know, we add some use cases first to this document. Uh, no, not here. To this document, I already add a section on use cases. So anyone would like to add this? Any people would like to sign up for this? I can write some, add some. How about Tim, would you like to add some? Um, uh, I'll have a look at the documents. Um, so are you talking about use cases? Yeah. Mm. Um, sure. Okay. Anyone else would like to add? Okay. <clears throat> Any other volunteers? Yeah, this is Farad. I, I could probably write a use case. Okay, good. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, so, um, let's go back to the gender here. Um, so use cases, now let's see. Okay, so the scope of the service uh, workflow, which, you know, uh, document here, this is um, kind of the, uh, not this here. This is, uh, I can, this is kind of like a scope. I can put into this as, uh, you know, anyone would like to add, um, I mean, any comment on this? I see some, I think this should be out of scope for workflows. Which one uh, are you referring to? Uh, the, the highlighted one? Oh, this one. What power should be used to correlate those events to the same function? Workflow? Yeah, that's more about correlations, right? Oh, no, actually here should be, you know, actually uh, in the work application workflow. So, so that's why, okay. For the in the event cloud events, we define some labels or some um, property values, some property or we can call it labels, right? Mm -hmm. But how they are used, um, I think you know they should be defined here. It's a workflow that you know um, 
which involves multiple events, that's going to be defined uh, here. It's going to be defined here, like which label in that event property should be used to correlate, you know, all the events. Yeah. All the events associated with the application together. So that's why I think, you know, we need to define it here. Because here is the time, here is a place that's going to define say which label will be used for that complication yeah. workflow. Yeah, I'm disagreeing with that. I don't think we should pull that into workflow. So I think there's a bigger question here. Sorry guys, I joined a few minutes late. Uh, like there is a concept of workflow where something triggers a workflow which leads to different steps and different decision points and whatnot. But right now, in this write-up, we're combining a lot of things, which I feel is going to make it really difficult for us to actually make progress. So the two things which I like particularly think we should pull out of this, one, we have this concept of events happening within the workflow in different parts of workflow, depending on new events. In my mind, like uh, uh, event should trigger a workflow, but then that workflow is kind of almost predefined. And then the correlation of new events happening, that's like another level of complication. So I want to understand use cases, uh, why we need to do this. Uh, in my mind, like the correlation thing and the new events happening, which the stages of workflow have to stop and depend on, like those two things are like, can complicate this whole thing a lot. So I want to understand why we want to pull those two things in versus kind of uh, go by, uh, I'm taking Amazon as an example, right? So kind of what ASL supports right now, right? Why, why not kind of keep our scope to that much? Okay, so maybe I think, uh, no, I, think I understand your key concerns. This will make the workflow complicated, right? Um, I think, the, how about we wait until the use case, right? Yeah. Your, uh, yeah. We, you know, yeah. yeah, I can put in a use case for that so you can see why we need this. Okay, and also I think your other comment is once you know we put some use cases we can see um, why we need it okay so, so Ern, I just want to make sure I understand um, when it comes to the correlation aspect of it um, is it is the reason that you think it's out of scope is because ultimately if there's even if there is correlation done by the time the workflow gets invoked it's sort of been uh, collapsed down to almost like a single event at that point and that's why we can leave the correlation bit as sort of out of scope for us? Yeah, I feel like either it's done or it's a responsibility of a function to do it. It's not a responsibility of a workflow to do it is what I feel, but I could be wrong. Okay. Um, I, I just feel like we're trying to solve kind of the correlation use case on the even side of things, uh, which, which seems like the right place to do it rather than also do it in a workflow. Okay, yeah. thanks, for, thanks for clarifying. So let me... Uh, let me clarify. Okay. I'm Chatura from WSO2. So uh, I think, uh, so my from my perspective, I think uh, it is better to have correlations because uh, one use case would be if we invoke a function within a workflow that replies asynchronously. So in that case, uh, we have to receive the output from that function in a separate channel. So for that, we need correlations because we need to correlate that response back to the same instance of the workflow. Yeah, so that's right. If we support such situations, we need to have correlations. Yeah, so so I think I'm, okay. So I think, you know, probably, yeah, and there's some, um, let, let's uh, add, once add the use case, it's more clear uh, why we need this. Um, so for example, um, the user, if an application involves two events, right? Then, you know, we need to correlate these two events to the same workflow instance. So what kind of label to use to correlate those two events? Because there could be multiple instances of each event, each of the two events. So that's why we need to, in the workflow um, definition, it, we need to have a place for the user to specify which label should be used to correlate those event instances to the same workflow instance. Does that make sense? Let me first add the use case, and then you know probably we can better uh, see this. Cool. Sorry, I'm I'm sure you guys were trying to answer my question in my audio disconnected, but Kathy, <laughs> the other use cases that'll be great. Okay, good. So yeah, I think I'm not sure who spoke before. Was that Shatura? Maybe you could add that 
into the document, uh, you know, just to way of explanation of, of why yes. you see the, um, the correlation is required. Yes, yeah, sure, I read that. Great, thank you. Oh, so let's add the action item on doc. Uh, let's see the scope of workflow here on uh, correlation. I'll make this decision. So action item. Uh, who, who's, who is going to add? Uh, I'm chattering from the research. Uh, would you like to write on there? Uh, I, I do not know how to spell your name there. It's C H A T H Jetkura K U R A C H A D is that right? C H A T H U R A. Okay, so you will add a uh, uh, use case for the correlation. Yes, yeah, for for why we need correlation. Workflow. Okay, and I think I will also add one. Two. Okay, good. Um, so the, the, yeah, the second thing I had around um, kind of scope and what we should pull in here or not. Right now, Kathy, your document talks about um, different step of the workflow being blocked on receiving new events. Like that's another thing I feel is like we should think if we really want that in scope or not. Uh, but I'm, I'm concerned about that. Oh, so okay. maybe so if you scroll down to your diagram below, right, I have a comment uh, uh -huh. so where, where you have like uh, step one happening and after that event one and two happen, which leads to function one. But what if event one and two happen while we are in function step four? Like, like I feel we're just kind of combining steps and function executions and decisions and new events. It's, I'm not able to wrap my head around it. <laughs> okay, let me try to clarify this. So um, this diagram shows how user wants the workflow to, uh, to Execute okay. Um, so the user from this diagram, what it means the user wants to say, okay, in step one, you know, it needs to for this application, you need to wait for event one and event two to happen and then trigger function one. Okay, yeah, so if event one, event two does not happen, the user does not want to execute any other function. Okay, that's what the user wants. Okay, of course, the user can say, um, this is just an example, the user can also specify in step one. I just execute function one without any events. Just like in step two, there's no event trigger. The user just say, oh, once you go to the step two, just execute this function without waiting for any event. So is uh, this a lot, this is just an example. Any step, yeah. you can say you want event trigger or you do not want event trigger. So yeah, that's not, what I, yeah. I think that's what my higher level disagreement is. I think workflow should be even triggered, but steps within the workflow should not be even triggered. Okay, that again goes back to the use case. Yeah, for that case, if you just say the first step, uh, the workflow is event triggered, but the intermediate step um, do not um, need event trigger, I think we are restricting, uh, 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 to restricting, you know, um, very restricted to some use case, we cannot support, you know, some use cases. That's why, let's see, because in some use cases, for example, that just give me an example, like in a travel, um, travel approval application, mm -hmm. right? You first, you mm -hmm. need the event is, okay, someone submit a travel request, right? Mm -hmm. That's one event. So you do some validation or whatever, right? And then later, you want to say, okay, um, okay, if it's approved, uh, then you want to receive approval event from some another event. It's approval event, it's not travel request event. And then later you could also involve uh, some, you know, ticket. once approved, you are going to shop around for tickets, right? So then you need to receive another event is about ticket price from different uh, airlines. So just for a, a, a travel, um, how to say, a travel application system, it's not a complicated system. We can see it's already involved several events a different step. 
Yeah, I mean, this has a distinct advantage in that um, you're able to coordinate, you know, events from multiple different sources that are required at different times within a single workflow. I mean, if you don't do that and you have to start up different workflows, then you have the, the overall problem of still managing the multiple workflows. So, you know, bringing them together into a single workflow with these, um, you know, steps is, is a distinct advantage here. Yeah, but like how, so when you say receive an event, how, how are we receiving events? Are we going to define that in this too? Like what, what, what is receiving an event mean over here in this use case? Well, you, you would define a particular, um, something like maybe an event state, which I think is actually outlined later in the document. Where no, but like, where is that even coming from, right? Like, am I? Well, I mean, like, it's not, essentially that, that's, you know, essentially no different from, you know, looking at a simple uh, FAS uh, function where you, you know, you're receiving an event, you, you have to set up the, the mapping, you know, the association between the event and the function. That, this would be done in a similar fashion. Yeah, so but the, now you also have to do that to a workflow, not just to a function then. That's right, yeah. So the workflow, inside the workflow, right, there are many steps, each step, it just like, uh, you know, it's, it's no difference from, you know, a single, uh, a single like, you know, uh, event trigger or function, right? The event could come from different sources. It could be a storage event. It could be a messaging event. It could be, a, you know, a, a streaming event. Yeah, any kind of event. It just, you know, you call, with a workflow, you coordinate all these steps together because that's what uh, application really uh, involves. Yeah, I, I, I get it. I think I, I just think of some of the serverless workflows, um, again, kind of going back to um, Amazon step language and all like how they're doing this versus the traditional workflows, the example you took off the travel system and approval system. In my mind, I kind of like think those two differently. I think I'm thinking more of orchestrating and chaining a lot of functions rather than a traditional kind of a workflow pipeline in my mind. and kind of if we take in uh, these use cases of things being blocked on events, how long are they blocked for, where are the events coming from, um, like it does complicate our whole whole system quite a bit. But as I said, right, if we have use cases for those, then I guess we should. So I think just putting in those use cases will be helpful. Okay, good. Sounds good. Yeah. So, so I, I would like to clarify, I, you know, it's not just a function you know, just a series of function. Uh, I think, you know, we need to have cover those use yeah, like, like, I think I was, I'm still not convinced whether going for this a lot more complex workflow system is more beneficial from what ASL is and why. Okay, I think we can, let's document the use case. Um, I think, yeah. I, I think it's very beneficial because if we just, if we just say, okay, just a series of functions without any, you know, in the we do not you know allow in one in the middle of the steps we do not allow the event to trigger. I think we are restricting uh, ourselves to um, we are exclude uh, quite some use cases. Kathy, I just want to make sure I understand. I, I apologize. I haven't had a chance to read the document yet. But in this particular picture, um, you branch and you, after step one, you do a branch to step two and step three. Does that branch happen? before function one is finished or right after function one starts? Um, after function one is finished. finished. Because okay. here it says function result, right? So that comes from the function one's result. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank so, you. Kathy, okay. something that might be useful uh, as part of the, this group uh, would be helping to tie this into uh, the uh, cloud event specification itself. Um, so that we can understand, you know, for instance, how the HTTP transport binding would uh, trigger the workflow. Um, or in this particular case, because of the fact that you have both functions and re function response, uh, as well as events being delivered to a function, uh, it'd be pretty clear that there would need to be some uh, consistency around uh, how to be able to deal with responses, as well as what the, the kind of event delivery envelope is going to look like. Um, so anyways, just 
just calling out that I think there's some some kind of lower level details here that we uh, want to make sure that we can, can connect the dots between what we've been working on and, and the system. Okay, so you're talking about we would like to document how the function result will be um, will be handled, something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Function result. Yeah, that's we will go. Yeah, when we really dive into detail of defining all this, yeah, we're going to go to there, right? But uh, yeah, that's a good comment. I think you know, um, we we we're going to work on that. But first, uh, um, so in here, I just give a very high level thing, you know, and then you know later we can dive into detail on defining all the different steps and the functions and how they relate to the event and function. Yeah. Sure. Um, um, so, Kathy, uh, if you consider the list of items that are in the top of the page. Top of the page? Oh, yeah, here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't we have to think of how are we going to, or whether we have to persist the state of the workflow in certain stages? Because uh, now I think we are talking about long running workflows, right? Because we are receiving events in the middle and so on. So, there can be cases where the runtime may crash in between a workflow and in such situations we may need to uh, persist the state or checkpoint the workflow and uh, have the ability to restart it later so do we yeah to... yeah is, is that, that the response implementation i don't think that should be part of the specification yeah i was going to say the same thing I, it seems like that's really implementation detail for whoever's implementing against this spec i think the spec should yeah. outline basically how it receives the events for the work for the workflow how it interfaces with functions uh, but in terms of the inner workings of the the workflow engine itself it's really up to the implementation to to kind of make the decisions around how it stores state that that kind of thing yeah good enough so uh, maybe one thing we may need to consider i'm not sure whether we have to consider but uh, is a uh, do we need to define the points where the workflow needs to be persisted? Like uh, usually in a traditional workflow, we usually persist after receiving a, receiving a message and so on. So do we have to define the spec that any implementer has to persist the workflow in these certain stages? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you say define whether we need to define that the, 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 the information, the event or the state will be persistent, something like that? Yeah, the stages in which the workflow state has to be persisted. State will be persistent? Okay, let's write it yeah, down. So I'm not sure that we have to consider, so we can discuss that. Yeah, yeah, do it to define the state will be consistent. Is that right? Uh, we, do we need to define the stages where the state has to be persisted? Yeah, to define that state has to be Okay. Um, I think I think I think you think persistent, not consistent, right? Yeah, persistent. Yeah. Oh, persistent. Sorry. Sorry. Persistent. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I think you know. Maybe we should, right? Or. Yeah, we, we I, I want to be care I want to be careful. I think maybe we should define what our use cases and try and like prioritize. Like I don't want to go and try and boil the ocean in in the first go. It seems like we're taking on a lot, but that's just maybe my engineer in me speaking and worried about kind of getting this done. Okay. Well, it also seems like you know whether we're going to have to persist state depends on how we choose to model this, right? Because if you look at, at Kathy's graph there, <clears throat> the way she's laid it out it definitely implies some sort of state. You could very easily rewrite this graph to make it look like every step is a completely independent function that's just waiting for a particular event to come in. And whether that yeah. comes in as, as the output of another event or another step, or whether it comes in just randomly on its own is irrelevant to the system. Right? And in that particular model, you don't necessarily need quotes, yeah. right? So it depends on how we choose to model this. And that's a very important design point we need to talk about. Yep. Like there is, a concept of a workflow, but there's also a combination of like aggregation of let's say functions and application. Uh, so they're two different things. Like workflow should really handle things that are kind of dependent on the actual workflow happening versus, yeah, I have five applications, they could get called with different events. And um, I just want to kind of keep that in mind, right? Uh, if if uh, step four only happens when even three uh, comes through, like, 
can can that be its own function? Does it need to be in a workflow? Maybe it does, but just just think through that. Okay, I think we put all this function and uh, application which involves these events and these functions together as a workflow has the advantage of you know you can orchestrate them and then, you know together and then pass information together pass information between them we can define all this in you know in the workflow so Kathy, just them. just on that point though i'd like to make sure i understand something um scroll back down right there so from step two to step four i see the step three i'm sorry step four has event three um, I think the, to me the arrow is backwards, but okay. Um, <laughs> step four gets invoked because of event three, right? Oh no, okay. Let me clarify. Step four, no. So step two, when you come to step two, you execute function two. After that, you just go to step four. And then when function five got invoked, when event three happens. Right, but did event three come from step four? And no. what was, the past, what was, no. the, what was event the way to, to step four? The event is external event, so it only when so when this event three could happen okay earlier right any event could happen any time during this step right? right but only when the step four when you reach the step four the user said only when you reach step four then you know that event will take effect to that event three will take effect and trigger function five. So what happens if you're if you haven't reached step four? but event three happens. It just falls on the floor and it gets ignored? That's a good question. That's how you implement it, right? That's the user, the user just say what its application wants, right? But you know, how you are going to support this? That's a- No, what no, I don't, think, I don't think that's any longer implementation because that has a direct impact on how the workflow flows. No, okay, so, so let me clarify this, okay. I think, you know, from the users, so I think the workflow we want to define here, is the workflow that users specify. It's desired workflow behavior, okay? It's not like how the system or the service platform should support this, support this. I think that let's separate these two. So one, so I, I my goal of what I'm thinking here is we need to, you know, um, provide a mechanism um, for the user to define what he or she wants, okay? Mm -hmm. but how the back end service platform is going to support this desired workflow, I think that's a separate thing. Uh, I think you are right. The, the, the back end you know, service platform really need to consider how we should support, how you know, it, should support, it should support it, right? For example, if the event comes early, how he should support it, how the platform will support yeah. it, right? But, but from the user's point of view, the user does not care how you are going to support it. The user doesn't care, say, okay, the event comes early, comes late or whatever, right? What the user specify is just, okay. It just, it, what the user just wants is, when you reach the step four, that which means function one has completed, and then the result is function result one, and then function two has completed. And then only when all this happened, I want function five, to be um, to be triggered when event three comes, that's what the user wants, right? Yeah, yeah, but but the user cares if the result ends up being different, right? So I think the specification does need to take care of, like our goal with all these specifications is that we should be able to take our workflows from one provider to another. Now, if one provider is dropping event three and the other is not, that is having a big impact on the final result of the workflow. So the user does care. Okay, so that means if the if one of the platforms drop event three, that means that platform is not supporting this workflow. That's the platform's okay. fault, okay. right? So then, 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 the user. Then, back to, then, then back to Doug's question, then in the specification, we need to define what needs to be done to event three if it happens before step four uh, getting executed or not, right? That needs to be in the specification. We can't just leave it for the providers. No, I, okay, I, I, I'm afraid I cannot agree with that because the thing is that why does, why we put the burden on the user? The user well, just say, okay, when event three happens, trigger function five. How you are going to handle event three? You're going to save it or you're going to throw it away? That's well, your- Kathy, the, the user's going to have to expect a consistent behavior. I mean, you know, the, um, 
so that regardless of where the you know what underlying system this workflow would be deployed on there has to be a consistent behavior regardless of what of what underlying platform is yeah i think i agree it needs to it's essentially boils down to whether it's a queued state machine or an unqueued state machine something of that sort but I think that whether it's a queued or unqueued, I think that's a backend implementation, right? I think, you know, for the you from the user's point of view, so how you are going to say the user, why does the user need to care? Say, oh, you are you implementing this using a, you queue it or you not queue it or you, you, you throw it away? The user just say, okay, this is what I want. I want when the event three happens in step four, execute function five. I don't, why, why does the user need to worry? Say, oh, if event three comes early, how you're going to do it to handle it? Yeah, because because in one example, you threw it away. So the user does care, right? If it gets thrown away, then function five never gets executed. So the user does care. So I think, you know, actually implicitly, you know, this implicitly means if it comes early, you should not throw it away. Because if it's thrown away, right? Okay, so yeah. then we need to define what if it came two years earlier? Like we have to define some of those things in... That that is how Mike. When I was thinking of this last night, this this amount of complexity is what actually was making me feel like we should keep it simple and keep the events out. But if this group feels we need to take that in, I'm happy to go that route. But we need to define those things. Then we need to yeah, define so, that in the specification. Okay, I, I think you know. I I I think probably what we should say is you know all this event if it comes early, it should not be thrown away because. That's what the user wants, right? Yeah, but that's not that's not good enough, right? Like, how much early? Like, um, what if even three happened six months earlier, and my workflow started now? Like, is somewhere somebody expecting now expected to keep uh, like that even three for six months? I'm assuming not. Um, so I think we we'll have to define those things if if we go down this model. And I think related to that is, I think it might have been Brian was saying, you know, what gets passed between these various steps. So, for example, this, the arrow between step two and step four, is that an event? Is it a cloud event? Is it something else? Okay, we can. We, we, I Great. think we need to define that. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yep. Um, lower, a low level piece here might be again if we're if we're trying to define how steps uh, actually tap into and wait for events. Then part of that configuration could be actually uh, responsible for configuring. You know, is it listening at the point of time that it reaches the step? Is it uh, pulling from something that has a you know an event log and it's just looking for the first event of this nature? Uh, I think there's a lot of different ways, but we could specify it there in that that kind of piece of the specification around how the step actually ties into the event source. Yep, agreed. And it, what's interesting to me is when, when you look at it as an event that gets sent from step two to step four, that's when I stop looking at this as a grandiose workflow thing, even though we may have to. I, I look at it more as individual functions where there may be multiple events coming into each one. Yeah, exactly. The, I think the specification could potentially really drive to the heart of each, you know, just focusing on the single step and then how we, we basically uh, define the operation around uh, the, those, those very small pieces. Exactly, and that, that's a much simpler model for me to wrap my head around, yes. So, Doc, would you like to write that down? Sorry, I didn't cut. I was typing something else. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a note of that in, um, in the minutes. So, let, let me, yeah, let me put down Doc, Brian, you were discussing, I put something say, define how event is tied to a step. I think you two are talking about how the step, <clears throat> the interaction between the steps, right? Something yeah. like that? Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll add some text there. Okay, I'll, I'll write it. Define interaction between the steps. Is that right? Do, do, I, do I catch? Uh, I'll, I'll expand on that while you keep moving forward. I'll, I'll add some more text. Okay, good. Um, so, let's see. Any other? Um, let's see, what's the time? Okay. We have uh, one more thing, so do we need to define the transaction models for workflows? Tra define transaction models for those yeah. workflows? That means, uh, let's say that uh, we need to make step two and step four atomic. So in that case, do we need to provide some way to make those two steps atomic? 
So atomic, you are saying, is that yeah. what? Like distributed transactions, things like that. Do we need? Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Okay, let me write down. Okay. Um. Oh, sorry. I'm typing together. Okay. So let let Doc finish that. No, go go ahead. You can start the next bullet. I'm I'm finishing up. Okay. This is chat. You you were talking about chat chat throw, right? Yeah. Um, so you are saying um, they define what? Define the uh, sorry. Transaction models for the workflow. Uh, pardon? Sorry. Transactions. Transaction. Transaction. Um. Transactions for workflow. Okay, hold on. Transaction between steps. Four steps. Four steps. Step. Atomic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, maybe let's do not highlight it. Do not bold it. Okay, good. Um So let's see, uh, any other? M I just could comment on the atomic one is I think like every function should be atomic. So I don't know if you need something special, but like I'm happy to look at a use case once, once it's in there. So I'm not talking about uh, function level, but I'm talking about multiple functions. Like for example, if you want to make a step two and a step four both atomic, that means either both has to be complete or not. Things like that. Okay, we should, again, I think we should be really care careful about. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really worried this definition is going to be something which is going to go in the Hall of Fame and nobody's going to implement it if you make it too complex. <laughs> but we sit in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. <laughs> in, in the never executed Hall of Fame. Yes. <laughs> Um, so I see, Doug, I see you're right, you know, whether we can reduce the entire workflow into a set independent function course where they're kicked up based on set up, um, but then that's not a workflow. Well, it depends on your point of view, right? You, you could break down the workflow into a set of independent steps, or you could look at it as one gigantic thing. I, I think both are valid ways to look at it. We just need to decide which way we're going to look at it. Yeah, but yeah. if you say it's a bring, um, break it into a setup, you know, independent steps, if there are multiple steps, then yes, it's still a workflow. So that's fine. But if you say just bring, break it up into just one step, then there's no workflow. That's my point. <clears throat> if you say break it into like, for example, you say, okay, step one, step two, step three, these three are one workflow and another is, you know, a step four or, you know, it's, it, it's fine, you know. Um, but if you say just single step, then there's no workflow, right? You just have one step. No, but my point is you could model step four as part of a larger workflow, or you can model step four as step four gets invoked when event three happens and when an event from step two happens. Oh, okay. That's what I, that's what I meant. You could you can model it either way and you get the same result. It's just two different ways to look at the problem. So okay. We need to decide which way we're going to choose to look at it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That that's fine. Actually, I would say this is just an example. If you break them up, if the user wants to break them up, that's fine. We just need to have a vehicle, no matter you know what kind of workflow the user wants to write, we can support it. Okay. Um that, that's up to the user. This is just an example. Another example could only have, you know, two steps. Oh, yeah. So, so I think that's fine. If you mean that, you know, uh, maybe you want to clarify that a little bit more. Because I'm reading this is per is in the, it just a setup independent function course. Um, um, other, uh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to ask a I was going to ask a completely different question. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, how, how much have people on this group kind of looked at other uh, people who are doing something similar in the industry, right? Like we're not, we're not the first one. Uh, while uh, I don't want to kind of copy paste from others, I, I don't want, um, we, I want to at least get influence and see what's been working out there and what's not working out there. Uh, 
I've only looked at ASL, so like I ended up mentioning that a couple of times. I don't know, Kathy, if you've kind of got a chance to look at the other models that exist um, in the world, especially kind of focused on serverless workflows. Yeah, um, I have looked at you know the AWS stack function, Microsoft mm -hmm. Azure, uh, I think it called uh, application logic, and also we have you know um, um, I think there are uh, another platform now something doing that. Um, yeah. So, so one of the things we did when we first started the serverless working group itself, when we put together that white paper, was basically talked about what's currently out there in the industry today. And so, Varun, I think you have a very good point there. Maybe it would make sense to have people give very quick presentations of what's out there today so everybody's on the same page about current state of the art. <clears throat> Yeah, and 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 um, obviously, I think that that presentation or whatever it is should focus on why why or what what things some of those existing stuff are not able to handle well, and how we're trying to actually handle that differently or uh, better. Yeah, because one of the questions we should ask ourselves is, as part of this exercise, are we really interested in solving a problem that no one has solved yet, or are we simply yeah. interested in trying to find some? some harmonization or interoperability around existing solved problems? Because I would think it's more the latter. Yeah, that's right. I think it's the latter. Uh, I don't think, you know, like, you know, the problem are not solved by what well, well, solving something on, um, you know, no one has ever solved, right? I think we're trying to come up with a common um, right. model that can be, you know, you know portable across all different platforms. For example, on um, step function support similar functionality. Um, AW, no, no, Microsoft Azure also similar. And right. yeah, so, right, so it might be useful yeah. to so it might be useful to have a presentation on maybe the three or four most popular uh, platforms out there to see what features they support, and so we can determine what's common across all of them to say those are probably the subset of things we should focus on. Or we can say it's not uh, not necessarily a subset. It's just some function, some um, some set which you know can support all these use cases, um, which can be portable across. Because if you want to find out, you know, not every platform support the exactly the same way, but we found some common things, you know, and then. Yeah. I also think that uh, we can also think about how we differentiate uh, function workflows from traditional workflows. Because uh, if you take traditional workflows such as BPMN and so on, so what are the differences are we going to have in here compared to them? So that will oh. make us easy to understand it, understand what we are going to do here. So maybe uh, I think, you know, we can, um, so for this, uh, I was thinking, you know, people, um, if you can add comments in here, and then so we can um, improve this document, that would be good. That would be the next step. Um, you can also feel free to add modify a section or add any new section which you need. Does that sound good? Yep. Okay, I think would it be useful to schedule time on next week's phone call for people to give very short presentations on what some of the current providers support? 
Okay. Or do you yeah. want people to do that, you know, in their own time? What do you mean by in their own time? Well, do you want people to go off and do the investigation on their own to see what people, to see what platforms support, or do you want them to give presentations on this phone call next week? Yeah, I think, you know, let's give presentation on the phone call next week. So who would like to, let's just decide who would like to give a presentation. Um, so anyone would like to give a presentation? Is there like people there who would like to give a presentation? Do we have Microsoft people on the call? Uh, I don't see Microsoft, but I don't think so. There's no one there? So let's, I can give a presentation on, you know, how Huawei's um, um, service platform solve this problem. I, I can reach out to somebody on the IBM side to talk about what OpenWhisk supports. Okay. I'll, I'll try to get them to show up on the call. Okay. I try. Also, so we at WSO2 are also developing a programming language called Ballerina. So within that also we are going, we are supporting uh, workflows. But that is ongoing work, so I can also give a presentation on that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, I think let, let's I just list the people, can I see? And then IBM, you say dog, who who will be? I'll, I'll try I'll try to find the appropriate person who's more of an expert than I am on it. Okay, so I just write your name there, okay? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, who else? I'm Chaturai from WSO2. Okay. So Kathy, which, which topic are you gonna be talking about? I'm talking about ASOS, is a uh, Huawei's um, service um, solution called Function right. Graph, yeah. Huawei. I can do it Huawei. So. Function Graph, it's called Function Graph. Let okay. me write it down. <laughs> graph, okay. yeah. Open with and chat. What's your what's your solution? I'm talking about ballerina, ballerina language. Sorry, maybe you want to write it down. Uh, I can write it. I can write it. Okay, good. I, I, we can also present. Maybe someone can present AWS. <laughs> Any volunteer? We could probably get Tim to do it. Tim? But he he's, he he had a job from the phone call, but we can probably volunteer him. We just put in here. Okay. Sure. That's, that's what we do to anybody who drops off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. And somebody for Logic Apps too, I think. I don't know who is somebody from Microsoft is gonna be part of these conversations or not. Oh we can present we can help present someone volunteer to present. You can you can just look into the Microsoft and then see how, how yeah. Whoever who wants to volunteer to present this? Logic apps? Anyone? Yeah, I'm, I'm just not sure if I'm going to be here. Like, I might have a conflict next week, so I'm not going to volunteer. <laughs> Anyone there would wa like to volunteer for the logic apps? Okay. I think we need to, we need to get Clemens to come do it. Yeah, we, we can get someone to, okay, maybe. Some someone can add his name there. Okay, that's fine. That's good. Um, so we have. I think we have uh, enough people to do the presentation. So next, let's do the presentation, and then we can add the use case. Um, um, I think that's good. Um, we have five more minutes. Any other suggestion? Uh, so here I have a comment. Say you say not solutions new com problems. Um, that depends on what, how we define the new problems, you know, if it's just some workflow related issue, right? Because different uh, um, platform will address, could solve, the scope is different. Okay. Oh, 
Mm-hmm. Cool. Kathy, are we doing attendance in these meetings? I joined 10 minutes late. I don't know if you're doing attendance or not. Yeah, we are. I, I, we I are. So let's put it in. What's okay, your name again? You. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, thanks. Your name is there, right? Okay, good. Yeah. So let's see. Um, okay. Um, reduce the entire workflow independent function calls to a, into a set of so so dog mm-hmm. i think here you know you say reduce the entire workflow into a set of independent function calls what do you mean by that well this goes back to what i was saying earlier if you look at each step in your in your example you could look at it as a set of independent function calls where they're invoked based upon one or more incoming events yeah, but are you talking about in, in into a a set of in the function? Okay, a set of independent function call steps. So you're not talking about one step, right? You just just say a set of steps, right? Well, I could here you know, replace calls with steps. Yeah, that would be good. Okay, so otherwise it's a bit okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, and. This is now, Hiro. Someone speaking? Uh, yes, this is now, Hiro. Can you hear me? Very Sorry, your voice is a bit low. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, okay, try. Could you try uh, again? Yes, uh, I'd like to one comment. Uh, in, the, in the beginning of this uh, meeting, uh, there is, there is uh, uh, one comment. Uh, uh, someone said uh, there is uh, two approaches. Uh, one is state machine, the other is uh, legacy graph. I think uh, we need uh, we need more understanding of uh, the difference between state machine approach and uh, legacy graph approach. As far as I know, I don't see any difference. Sorry, I have a hard time, you know, um, understanding. Could you speak up a little bit more? Okay. Uh, yes, I, uh, I, I think my comment is that uh, I think we need a common understanding of the difference between state machine approach and dependency graph approach, because uh, I don't see any Difference because the state machine has a dependency graph, and so uh, the, I I think uh, we need common understanding in this group. What is the difference between the two approach? So and the difference of this approach of these two, right? You don't see much difference, right? Yes. Okay. Um, if I. If I can, um, it seems like the state machine, state machine approach is pretty explicit about here, then there, then there. Whereas the dependency graph, you say, this is what I want, and then it's up to the system to figure out what the state machine is to achieve that dependency graph. Yeah, as far as I know, I think Apache uh, Airflow, uh, they said uh, using uh, dependency graph approach, uh, but uh, it seems to me uh, I, I couldn't understand the difference. So you said the uh, state machine is more explicit of the state? So he's saying, okay, is that dependency graph creates a state machine implicitly based on declared dependencies? Something like that. Okay. I think even, uh, I guess, you know, um, as far as I know, you know, AWS step function use a state machine um, way to do it. Uh, I feel that. Um, I feel the machine is more straightforward way to do it. And also Huawei's function graph is also that way. Um, I think the logic apps is also a similar way. But anyone would like to draft 
myself. So who is that just speak? Who, what's your name? Who just spoke? Sorry. Uh, this is Evan Anderson at Google. Oh, yeah. Evan, yeah, before you. Who is that? Uh, uh, um, I'm Nao Hiro. Pardon? I'm Nao, Nao Hiro. And maybe you want to add, is that how to spell your name? Maybe you want to add your name there? N-A-O-H-I-R-O. -O. Sorry, Nao Hiro, I'm just speaking for you, so. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. N-A-O-H-I-R-O. Okay, thank you. Now it's much better. Okay, your voice. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, I think we're running out of time. That's good. Um, so we're going to uh, continue our discussion next next week, next Tuesday. We're going to do. I think we're going to do the presentation on each um, on each um, solution. Um, that's all. Any more comments or questions? No. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's you know. So I'll meet again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.